Every character needs a walk cycle. It's one of the most basic animations in any game. But things get tricky when that character has to move through an environment. Upstairs, across slopes, over rocks. Hand animating all those variations? That can take forever. Sure, Unreal Engine has some basic AK tools like Foot AK to help out. Yet you still need to feed it animation clips one character at a time. But what if your character could just walk, adapt to the terrain, place its feet automatically? That's exactly what the new locomotor node in Unreal Engine 5.6 does. It generates procedural locomotion, calculates foot collisions and works with characters with any number of legs. In this video we'll set it up on a normal biped humanoid character so that with just one control we can point where it should go. And it will walk there, animated in real time, stepping smoothly over obstacles. I'm also going to show you how to set it up for a wolf with four paws and the specific setup for front and hind paws. This tutorial is for intermediate users. You should have some basic control rig experience already. A word of caution, the locomotor plugin is still an experimental feature and Unreal Engine 5.6 is still in preview, so things could still change until the release. But this feature is so cool that I had to do a quick tutorial about it. The locomotor in Unreal Engine 5.6 helps solve a classic animation problem. How do you make a character walk toward a target, realistically, without hand animating every step? It works like this. You give the locomotor a target position and rotation, and it calculates how the pelvis and feet should move to get there. But it doesn't pose your character directly. It outputs foot positions and pelvis motion. You'll need to use IK, like full body IK, to turn those foot positions into proper leg animations. Internally, the locomotor runs a looping face system, kind of like a motor, to time each footstep. You can adjust things like stride length, speed, and how long each foot stays in the air to get different walking styles, from light and bouncy to heavy and grounded. Let's go over the prerequisites before we start. You need to have Unreal Engine 5.6 Preview installed. You can get it from the Epic Games launcher. I started a fresh third-person template since it gives me the mannequin characters already as part of my project content. With the new project open, we first need to activate the plugin to get access to the locomotor node. So go to Edit, Plugins and search for Locomotor. Activate it and restart the project. If you also want to rig and animate the wolf character, download the Animal Variety Pack from the Fab Marketplace. The link is in the description. Let's start with the simple locomotor rig for Manny. First we're going to find the skeleton mesh asset for Manny in the content drawer and right click on it. Then we can select create control rig. Let's name the control rig something meaningful and then double click to open it up. In the rig hierarchy we right click on the root joint and create a new control. We can call it target control and adjust the visual so that it is visible and easily selectable. Make sure we hit compile so that we can use it in the rig graph. Now we can right click in the node graph and search for the locomotor node. Let's set it up and connect it to the forward solve node. Under root control we set up our newly created target control. When we expand the pelvis section we can set the pelvis bone to Manny's pelvis bone. Remember the pelvis bone is going to be moved by the locomotor node, whereas the feet positions are only going to be calculated. So let's set them up. We're going to add one foot set. A foot set is a variable number of feet that should always work together. Since we're working with a bipedal character here, one foot set is enough. For the wolf that we are going to tackle later, we need two foot sets. Alright, in the foot set we are going to add two entries, where we can set up the foot L and foot R as the ankle bones respectively. Once we compile the rig again, we should see a green cube shape on the pelvis. The feet should also have some white circles which define the collision volume for them. There is also a green line going out from the center to the edge of the circle. This indicates the status of the locomotor's face by rotating 360 degrees for one full face. If we drag around the target control in the preview window now, we can see that Manny is already moving, since the locomotor is animating the pelvis bone, and the debug shapes are animating the steps for the feet, but the feet themselves do not actually move. So let's make them move. For that we're going to make use of the full body IK node. So let's create it and set it up. In the root we will select the pelvis bone and we're going to add two effectors. Effector 0 is going to be foot L, and effector 1 is going to be foot R. Make sure the order is the same as we have set it up in the locomotor node before. That's important. The effectors take a transform as an input, and we can see that the locomotor node gives us the feet transforms as an array. So no matter how many feet you set up in the locomotor, all of the calculated positions will be available from that array. Now we only need to get the individual transform values for each foot. For that we can use the add node, which gets a value from an array at a specific index. Arrays always start at zero, so we're going to use the transform at zero, and put it in the transform input for foot L. 
And then we're going to get the transform at 1 and put it in the input for foot R. Let's set the chain depth to 3 so that we are also affecting the bones above the foot and the IK can do its thing. If we compile now and drag around the target control in the viewport, we can see many walking, but it looks quite awkward. The steps don't look right, it looks like he's sneaking and the legs bend in weird directions. So let's fix that. There are a lot of settings to tune exactly how the locomotor calculates the movement of your character. These are neatly separated into categories. Movement gives you control over the overall movement, like speed, acceleration, etc. Stepping allows you to set up how a step is calculated. Pelvis lets you specify the pelvis movement, and Debug gives you the settings for the debug visualization, which I find quite helpful. Let me show you what I set up for Manny's rig. Under Movement, I changed the speed max to 100, and set the face speed max to 2. Under Stepping, I increased the step height to 30. This gets rid of the sneaking, since Manny needs to really lift his foot to walk now. Let's add an entry to the bone settings and select Calf L, which is the bone above the foot in the rig hierarchy. Scroll down and check Use Preferred Angles. Then expand the preferred angles and type in something like 30 or 40 in the z-axis. Let's right-click on the entry and duplicate it. Now we can exchange the calf L for calf R to set it up for the right foot as well. Then we're going to scroll down even further and change a few of the overall settings. We're going to increase the sub-iterations to something like 20 so that the movement looks smoother. Then we're going to set the root behavior to 3 and set the global pull chain alpha to 0. After compiling, many should walk around a bit more naturally. It's not perfect, but it's a start. If we want him to do something with the rest of his body, we can give him a preview animation in the control rig editor that just gets played on a loop. For that, let's open up the preview scene settings and under preview controller, set use specific animation. An animation sequence entry appears. In that we can now choose any animation that should be played. I'm going to choose an idle animation here. Now Manny looks a bit more alive and when we drag the target control around, it feels a bit more natural or as if he's doing some crazy dance moves. Okay, quick recap. We set up a basic locomotor system for many. The locomotor handles the pelvis movement, but only calculates the foot movement, so we need the full body IK to make the feet actually move. Then we tuned the movement settings for a more natural stride and added preferred angles to fix the awkward joint bending. Finally, we added a looping idle animation to make many feel more alive. Alright, wolf time. For the wolf, the setup is pretty similar. Let's search for the wolf skeleton mesh asset and right-click it to create a control rig for it. Open up the control rig and create the target control as before. Now we can create the locomotor node again. The root control will once again be our target control and the pelvis bone will be set to the wolf's pelvis bone. The foot set setup is different, since our wolf has four feet where many had only two. The front legs are different from the hind legs, but they are the same for each side. So we will create a foot set for the front legs and another one for the hind legs, with two entries each. In our first foot set, we'll set up the front legs. So let's start with the front left leg. The bone is called finger zero, but it is the foot bone. We do this for the left and then the right. And in our second foot set, with the index 1, we'll set up the hind legs. First left, which is called foot now actually, and then right. Let's make sure to compile and save in between, since 5.6 preview likes to crash sometimes. When we drag around our target control, we can see that the front and rear legs are perfectly in sync, which is not realistic. To remedy that, we can use the face offset in the foot set settings. Let's set this to 0.75 for the second foot set, index 1, and compile again. Now the feet are no longer in sync, and it looks much more realistic. Before we move on to the full body IK setup, we can tune the movement and stepping settings in the locomotor node already. Under movement, we can increase the speed max to 200 and set the face speed max to 2. Under stepping, we can increase the step height again, but this time to 20, then set the step ease in to 0.5 and the step ease out to 0. And we can increase the max collision height to 100 to make sure collisions can be tracked from bigger heights. Let's create the full body IK node now and set it up. Once again, we set the pelvis bone as the root, and this time we need four effectors. And as before with many, we need to set them up so that the order stays the same as in the locomotor node. Then we can get the feed transforms again from the locomotor and put it in the respective effector transform input pins and set the chain depth to 3.
under settings we can once again increase the sub iterations to 20 and set the root behavior to 3 and the global pull chain alpha to 0. Our wolf also doesn't want its legs broken, so we set up the preferred angles in the bone settings again. We're going to set them up as follows. Wolf L hand, 30 on the z-axis. Wolf R hand, also 30 on the z-axis. The left forearm is 40 on the z-axis, and the right forearm is also 40 on the z-axis. Left upper arm is minus 40 in the z-axis, and right upper arm is also minus 40 in the z-axis. The left thigh is minus 20 in the z-axis, and the right thigh is also minus 20 in the z-axis. We can once again set up a preview idle animation to make the wolf feel more alive when we drag him around in the preview, but I'd like to show you the result in the context of a real environment. So here I have set up a simple greybox environment using the level prototyping meshes that come with the third person template. Let me set up a sequencer and add the wolf character. I will use the look around idle animation in the animation track, but I'm also going to add our locomotor control rig on top. Notice that if I drag the target control around the environment now, the wolf walks towards it with the automatic foot placement on top of the obstacles that I've prepared. The animation is not played since I'm not playing the sequencer. If I now animate the target control and then play the sequencer, you can see that the wolf is also playing the animation as well as moving the feet due to the locomotor setup. I have also built a simple forest environment from a few mega scans and trees for the wolf to walk around. This is how it can look. Now working with the locomotor setup in the sequencer is a bit weird. Maybe this will be fixed and it's due to it still being in preview, but I thought I'd still share my grievances with you. When you place your character anywhere in your level that is not the position 000, it will automatically start walking towards that position, even if the position is not really reachable. It gives it its best try. When you animate the target control in the sequencer and scrub the playhead or do anything other than playing the sequence, the character will always start walking from the start location towards the new target location, and it will disregard any keyframes you have set in between. Animating a camera alongside the character can be a bit tricky with that. Of course, you could bake the locomotor animation down into an animation clip, but where would the fun in that be? Then you would lose all of the procedural epicness. So that's not awesome right now. Other than that, it's truly a great feature, and I can see many situations where this could be valuable, be it simple AI movements or maybe even digital puppeteering. The sky's the limit. Recap time. We started with an intro to the locomotor what it is and how it helps you create procedural movement. Then we covered what you need to get started and walked through a detailed setup for many, our bipedal mannequin. After that, we looked at how to adapt it for a quadruped like the wolf and highlighted the key differences. We also touched on using the rigs inside a level, how to animate them with the sequencer and wrapped up with some tips, issues and things to watch out for, especially since the tools are still in preview. Big shout out and thanks to Kieran Ritchie from Epic Games for answering my questions on Twitter and his tutorial that this video is based on. Super helpful stuff. I'm gonna link it in the video description, so please take a look if you want a written tutorial and a bit more info on this. If you've got questions, feedback or run into issues, drop them in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. And if this was helpful, like and subscribe and stay tuned for more. Thanks for watching, see ya!